everyone. Welcome back to the Piano and Series by ABA Learn. Today is piano and cello. In this episode, we are going to focus on how to choose the repertoire for intermediate level students, especially for piano students who want to collaborate with cellists. I'm grateful to have my brother, Zhong Yu, again, a wonderful cellist in this conversation. Hello, everyone.、Um, it's very nice to be here again. Thank you, Ling, for inviting me again. It's my pleasure to be here. No, 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 no. Thank you for spending time with me.、Um, Zhong Yu, can you tell us some tips for choosing the pieces? I feel sometimes I'm not so sure how to choose the piece、uh, when it involves the instruments besides the piano. I know sometimes the cello part looks simple, but、um, actually it's not really easy. Like Swan by Sun Songs, the cello part has pretty simple notes, but there are many twists and shifts on top of phrasing control. Well, those notes are not just simple, but yeah, I agree. Swan is definitely not a piece that you just want to pick and then play. Well, you probably want to find something that the cello part、um, basically stays in the lower position, like here, not all the way up here,、uh, like a thumb position. And also, the rhythm can be slightly complex, as long as the piano part has a metronome,、uh, metronome-like pattern. That can help the cellist to have a, a stable pulse. Also, you might want to choose a key that doesn't have too many flats or sharps. For example, Sonata in C Major by Breval might be a good choice for a pianist who want to explore the chamber music with cellists. Ah yes, I noticed the piano part has consistent quarter or eighth notes throughout the entire movement. But I've got a question. Here I see the cello part、uh, in the second page, second line. Those tenths look scary. I mean, they will look scary for pianists.、Uh, will it be too difficult for intermediate level cellists? Well, let me look at second page.、Uh, oh, well,、um, that's not too bad actually. It's. It's it requires a lot of string crossing, yes. But again, it's still in the lower、uh, position, so it, it it's there all the time. So don't worry too much. You just need to have a clean string crossing part. It's not not too bad. Oh wow! Okay, I get it now. Well, with that in mind, I want to ask which particular elements of chamber music do you think students can learn by studying this piece? Okay,、um, well, I think one of the most interesting aspects in chamber music is that there's a communication between piano and cello.、Um, for example, in this piece,、uh, the second line, the, the fifth bar, I have. <laughs> And the piano has.、Oh. oh, okay. So piano is here.、Um, left hand shouldn't cover your melody, and when we play our right hand, we should、um, base on your volume and your tone color, and then make some adjustment. For the entrance, that's what you mean. Yes, absolutely. Um. Also, I think it would be a good idea to try、uh, for both instrument to try to match the um the articulation. So you see that the cello line we have the little, little accent, and it, it might be a good idea for pianists to also to do something like that. There's another place that I think is interesting for both instrument. Um, the third page, fifth bar. So the cello has from the coming from the the scales. The pianist, you guys, uh, in the left hand, you have the. So at this bar, you will hear like 
two voices are doing the same thing. Oh right, yeah. The piano left hand joins the melody with the cello, and so it's very important that piano comes on time. And also,、uh, articulation is important too because the both of them should have a matching slurs. And well, the dynamics they are both going to crescendo to the next bar. So yeah, it will probably take some rehearsal time to work out those details for students. Okay, and now I just saw um the last page, uh the fourth fourth line, second bar. Do you know why, in our part we have a forte, but you guys have mezzo forte? Oh, okay. Uh, now I'm the guest. Um, I think. Let me see. I think there are two answers for that. The reason that we are in mezzo forte. So first is well, we are playing chords.、Uh, versus you guys are only have one note each time, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six notes at one time. So our texture is pretty thick. So it would be, it'll be、uh, very helpful if we have the vo- like volume one level down than yours. And the second reason,、um, you are you are playing the G, like it's somewhere around the G- register of yours is around middle C. Which is, we are also playing those notes, so it's very easy for us to cover you guys. Am I right? Yep, that's the answer I want to hear. So, be very mindful and careful when you are playing that bar with us. Yes, sir. That's good to know.、Uh, I agree with you as well. I think those. Things we just mentioned will help the students to actively listen to each other for sure, and it sounds fun to play as well. Well, thank you, Zhong Yu, for chiming in today. I hope this episode is inspiring and helpful. Please subscribe to our channel for more episodes, where we will explore other aspects of playing these two instruments.、Um, I will see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. See you soon.